Hello friends. Well, a little fire making today. In one of our past adventure videos, maybe, I don't know, three, four videos ago, I was talking about goldenrod as a really, really good fire starter. I wanted to elaborate a little bit on that today and show you exactly how to use it. Now, the wonderful thing about these goldenrods is they come in all kinds of varieties and together with some of the aster family, which has the same properties often in the dried stalks. These have a very wide distribution across the globe. They're old world and in the new world plants, and they are easy to find in general, any kind of disturbed ground. So very common in fields, very common on roadsides. I've seen them on forest roads some of the first growth coming back after clear cuts at times. And so your, <laughs> your chances of finding and being able to work with a goldenrod or one of these asters is pretty high. Now, one of the challenges we put before forest monks was something called a speed fire. And a speed fire was, well, there are different parameters for every person depending on their skill level. But let's say Here's person A, and we are giving them one minute timed to stand here with nothing and to gather all their materials and start their fire. And then we want to see flames for three minutes after that. So it's not just getting something that starts up and goes out, but getting something that is retaining enough heat to essentially start other materials. And what this is showing is it's showing the ability to quickly find materials that can serve as the base of, of a fire, as a, a tinder bundle if you're using an ember, or a tinder bundle if you're going to be, today I'll be using a fire steel. So that tinder bundle, and then smaller materials, slightly larger, slightly larger, and then enough that it's going to, again, have standing flames for three minutes. And doing that might sound impossible to a lot of people. One minute to gather your materials and start the fire, and then to have standing flames for three. It's a fun challenge, and I would love it if you took the challenge and see if you can do it. But with what I show you today, if you have some goldenrod around you, I bet you'll be able to do it. So I'm going to show you up close why goldenrod can be so powerful for this. Here we have a couple of goldenrods, different varieties. And I'd like you to notice something in here. So when we get up close, we have all kinds of little fluffs. And we know that those are really good at catching a spark or holding and nestling an ember and helping it grow. If we look after that, we're going to see some really small stems. Now these are woody, so they are going to transfer heat to these very slightly larger pieces. As we work down the plant, we can see, all right, more and more of these nice stems feeding into, look at the larger one, and that one is what's going to give us our three minute burn. Now there's a quick way to process this so that it's going to be most optimal for fire making. And this quick processing uh, technique is going to help you with any kind of a material that has, is similar in nature. So for instance, you have pulled down the old dead branch of a white pine and you're going to see something similar where you have the little pine needles that are going to really just be starting your fire and that's going to feed into slightly bigger sticks and bigger and bigger and bigger to whatever diameter your stick was that you broke off. So this same process allows you super quick to break down your materials and have them set for optimal speed in fire making. Now you might be saying, Come on, I don't need to start a fire in one minute. And yeah, it's kind of a novelty, but again, 
it's a skill building thing. If you can start a fire in one minute, then when you are, let's say, out in the cold and you really want to get a fire going, but you're afraid if you take those mittens off, those heavy mittens off, you're going to lose feeling in your fingers really, really quickly. That's a lot more frightening and paralyzing if you feel like it takes you 10 minutes to get a fire started. If you know you can get one out in 60 seconds, then you know your, your fingers are going to have some ability to work within that 60 seconds. Same thing, you're starting a fire, it's starting to get dark. For a lot of us, if we don't have a lot of practice, it takes 10, 15, 20 minutes to start a fire. As dusk is there and it's getting dark, sometimes it gets dark really quick, especially if a storm or other clouds are moving in. And so knowing that you can do it fast just gives you that extra confidence. You don't have to ever probably start a fire in a minute, except under some extreme circumstances <laughs> that we could dream up. But in general, boy, you can do it in a minute, then you're really comfortable starting a fire in say two, three, four minutes. All right, this is the same stock that I was showing before. I'm gonna show you the way to break this down. I'm gonna do it slowly so you can see instead of whipping through it. But basically I'm gonna look here at where there's the ending of the smaller branches and I'm just gonna snap there. I'm going to reach up to where the little stuff starts and I'm going to snap there. Now I have three different sections of materials and obviously those snaps could be made very, very quickly. This I'm going to break into, I'm thinking about how big my fire wants to be. In this case, let's imagine we're doing that speed fire. So I'm just gonna be breaking it about there, there, there. And I've got my big pieces of all roughly the same size. This, I'm gonna do the same thing, but here I'm gonna strip it down like I'm stripping a banana peel. Grabbing. grabbing off the main. Now I have a bunch of these small sticks. They're all separated out individual. This is basically ready, except that I want it to be condensed in order for it to take a, in this case, a spark. All I'm gonna do is wrap it up into a little bird's nest. Now on the ground, I've got my three piles of materials. These guys, I'm gonna quick separate into three piles and set them down over the top. These guys, all ready to go. I'm gonna set down on top of that. But I'm gonna be doing that after I get that initial bird nest going. So again, here they are, there's the big ones. These, I could separate into the three right from the beginning if I wanted to. And here's my bird's nest, ready to go. This material is nice because I can set my fire steel right down into there. A lot of times, you know, people have a lot of trouble with these fire steels sometimes. And there's the push method, the hold and pull method. There's all kinds of different ways to do it. But especially if you're beginning, to set it right down inside there is really a pretty easy way to do it.
Well, my friends, it's a pretty simple principle. And you'll find goldenrod about you. This is the perfect time of year to look for it in, up here in the Northern Hemisphere because it's winter for most of us. And that means that it's going to be dry and ready to use. Some of them have pretty sparse heads and you're gonna have to collect a fair amount of those heads and squish them up in order to have a really good tinder bundle or flash bundle. With other species like the one we used here, it's got a pretty nice one. All right, friends, let me know if you try this out. <laughs> I'm not, as you probably figured out, actually saying that goldenrod is the best tinder in the world, but it's a really effective one. And if you try the ones in your area, I think you'll find that different species have different qualities. See if you can find one that works really well for you. Let's also, down in the comments, make this a resource for people by you sharing your favorite Tinder material. What really works well for you? Why do you like it? And we'll have a little resource down there that people can come to and learn from so we can all see what we all consider to be our favorite. Thanks to you all. Love to you all. Talk with you in the comments.